Republican State Representative Brian Harrison of Waxahachie, thank you so much. We appreciate it. Hey, Jack, so, it was great to be with you. Appreciate that. Uh, Senate Bill 7 passed during the third special session is headed to Governor Abbott. You've been a strong advocate for basically banning COVID-19 vaccine mandates. Um, so your reaction that it's passed and is going to the governor and why was it so important to you? Well, it's, it's absolutely, it's a great thing. And I'm very proud and honored to have led the charge in the state of Texas as the loudest voice in the state against COVID tyranny. Quite frankly, we should have banned COVID mandates a very long time ago. In fact, I filed the Texas COVID Vaccine Freedom Act uh, four hours after I was sworn into the legislature um, almost exactly two years ago today. And I'm very proud of the Texas Senate, who has repeatedly um, passed bill after bill after bill uh, to ban COVID vaccine mandates in the state of Texas. It was really disappointing to me that Speaker Friedland and his uh, leadership team in the House chose to protect COVID mandates for uh, two full years. I mean, just think about how many careers were ruined in the intervening two years because of that um, terrible decision. But look, it's a good thing that it happened. Uh, it took too long. And now the thing that I care the most about is making sure that every Texan benefits from it. And it's, it is unfortunate that um, Speaker Phelan and the Democrat parliamentarian chose to uh, warp the House rules to not let the bill protect one of the groups who's most harmed by the mandates, and that's our students. Uh, private uh, universities are, are not banned from having mandates, neither are nursing schools or medical schools. And I'm sorry, our future doctors and future nurses, they deserve medical freedom too. So unequivocally, this is a great thing. I really appreciate the Senate passing a good bill and it getting passed in the House, and also proud to have worked to strengthen it. We made the penalties much stronger to show that, no, 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 we mean business in the state of Texas. When we say don't have COVID vaccine mandates, don't force people to get a vaccine for COVID against their wishes, uh, we really mean it. So this is a good thing. It's tremendous progress. It's two years too late, but it's still good. And now we got to go back. And I'm not going to stop um, fighting to protect all of our nursing students and college students and medical students as well. So when this goes into effect now, you talked about the increased penalties on private businesses that have a, a mandate to $50,000. How was it that uh, students at private universities, nursing schools, et cetera, how was it that they were exempted? I mean, was this part of the original legislation that was filed? Well, it was part of the intent from the Senate, clearly, as evidenced by the fact that they passed two bills uh, out of the Senate chamber that would have protected everybody, including explicitly nursing students in Senate Bill uh, SB 1024, as well as a Senate Bill uh, 177, the Texas COVID Vaccine Freedom Act. That would have banned covid mandates for anybody. So that's what the Senate wanted to do. But because of their concerns, and rightfully so, about our liberal Democrat, former Barack Obama White House lawyer who runs the Texas House, they were concerned um, that he might not let students be in there. But they wanted us to do it. I was working with the Senate author um, very closely, and I had an amendment to make sure that no private employer could uh, mandate a COVID shot on anybody in Texas who didn't want it. And unfortunately, uh, the Senate's concerns were proved correct when liberal Democrat, Obama White House lawyer, Hugh Brady, warped, bastardized, I mean, completely twisted the rules of the House to say that somehow it was out of order to protect students in a COVID-19 uh, mandate ban bill. That, that's completely and ridiculously absurd. Um, so I'm going to continue raising the alarm uh, on that, and I hope that we can uh, get them protected in this next special session. And in fact, I've explicitly asked the governor to rewrite the call so that even Speaker Phelan and his Democrat parliamentarian will not be able to continue excluding uh, students from the protections they deserve from tyrannical COVID vaccine mandates. Now, this is applies to students only at private universities. So if they're at a state school or at... So if there's... A if there if they're at a state school, they actually would already be protected uh, from a bill that we passed last session, right. which was SB 29. So all government entities, any private institutions or government agency or department, those are already banned from having uh, COVID vaccine mandates. And so, you know, and I know that uh, you worked in the Trump administration at HHS, uh, which helped develop the vaccine. And I'm wondering... Are you asked a lot about the fact that how is it somebody who was part of the team to get this vaccine in place? And how do you explain that, you know, you're very much against a, a mandate? It, it's the simplest thing in the world. 
I believe in medical freedom. The Trump administration was the medical freedom administration. Don't forget, I mean, I was in the White House with President Trump when he signed right to try. The point of Operation Warp Speed was to maximize the options, the tools for doctors and patients to make individual, and here's the key, voluntary decisions for themselves because you have a very different risk profile if you're an 18 year old healthy male versus maybe if you're a 75 year old who has 16 comorbidities your risks in terms of what could happen from you if you get COVID and therefore your willingness to, to get a vaccine or not those are dramatically different decisions we care about putting patients and doctors in charge not the government not bureaucrats and never were these tyrannical unjustifiable mandates, uh, something that ever should have happened. And I'm very proud to say that because of people like me working in the Trump administration, when we left office at noon on January 20th, 2021, there was not one single federal COVID mandate. We, we believed in medical freedom and we made sure that doctors and patients could have a choice. And it's completely consistent to support the development of vaccines and diagnostics and therapeutics and also oppose mandates by believing in medical freedom. So there's no inconsistency at all. Special session number four, and a, a lot of people are wondering, will the taxpayer financed education savings accounts for students to attend private school pass during this, the fourth special session, along with increases in uh, money for school districts, public school districts, that is, and also for teacher pay raises? Well, in the same way that I think the state of Texas should have been leading in medical freedom, and we should have multiple, you know, years ago banned COVID mandates, the state of Texas also should be leading in education freedom. Um, what we're talking about doing while it's new to Texas, we're hardly blazing a trail in the country on putting parents in charge of their kids' education. Over 31 states, think about that, over 31 states have already empowered their parents to some degree with education freedom and school choice. So we have to do this. The next generation is on the line to my colleagues in the Texas House. If you continue um, taking your orders from the liberal teacher unions, you're turning your back on the voters that put you in office. Voters across the state of Texas overwhelmingly want parents to be able to choose where to put their kids. Um, you're turning your back on students. Right now, unfortunately, our government education monopoly uh, across the state of Texas, on average, our Texas eighth graders, only 24% are proficient in reading. Only 23% are proficient in mathematics. And if you continue to oppose school choice, you are basically saying to parents across the state, you do not trust them to do what's right and what's best for their kids. And let me be really clear. I trust parents. Governor Abbott wants to put parents in charge. Lieutenant Governor Dan Patrick wants to put parents in charge. The Texas Senate wants to put parents in charge. It's about time the Texas House empower every parent in the state of Texas with school choice. Why do you believe, I mean, the governor has been pushing this uh, really all year. This has been going on for decades, really, where the state hasn't passed this. So why do you believe that there is still a objection to this by uh, rural Republicans in the Texas House? Honestly, I think it's because they're scared of liberal special interests that they've gotten too cozy to. And they've forgotten that it's 200,000 individual Texans that they work for. And we know the data are overwhelming. Texans want school choice. And don't give me this rule. Texas doesn't want it. I've got a mostly rural district. The ISDs are the biggest employers in every city they are in my district. But when this was on the ballot uh, two years ago, in the 10 most rural counties in the state of Texas, Republican primary voters said they support school choice by over 82% even in our 10 most rural counties. And if you look at the nation, nine of the 10 most rural states in America have some form of school choice. And not only does it not hurt the public schools, it actually helps the public schools because that's what happened every time you let competition do what it does in an economy. Um, quality improves over time thanks to the force of competition. And we've got to let that work here in education for the sake of the next generation when we're sadly, we're seeing a trend of indoctrination going up and educational attainments going down. We've got to let parents put their kids in a school where they can get a quality education. But let me ask you about your, you know, your comment. You're saying that they're afraid the rural Republican lawmakers in the House are afraid of the, the liberal teachers unions, et cetera. I mean, 
the rural school districts, there are no teacher unions in the rural school districts, unless I'm misinformed. I mean, you're talking about local people in the same communities as from these who elect these lawmakers. So yeah, I'm talking what, about what, so what, two, two, two things that there are teacher unions in Texas. They're very proud of it. I'll send you their websites and they absolutely have reached even in the most rural parts of the states. I'll have my staff follow up and send you that information. But it's not just the teacher unions. It's the taxpayer funded education organizations like TASA and like TASB that take my constituents money and then they hire liberal lobbyists to come down here and lie about school choice. They're taking my parents, hardworking Texas taxpayers who want nothing more than to be empowered to put their kids in the educational environment that's best for them. Their tax money, because the ISDs are sending money to organizations like the Texas Association of School Boards to hire liberal lobbyists to come down here and sell the teacher union talking points and convince Republicans, otherwise conservative Republicans, that the right thing to do is to keep uh, students trapped in schools that might not be meeting their needs. That's wrong. It's got to end, quite frankly. It's one of the many reasons that I think that Texas needs to ban taxpayer-funded lobbying. People's tax money should never be spent to hire liberal liberal lobbyists to come in and advocate against their interests, and in this case, against parents and against students. So look, um, I, I know I hear this a lot, that rural Texas doesn't want school choice. It's an absolute lie. Rural Texas wants school choice. You know why? Because rural parents love their kids and they want their kids to have a quality education. And that's what I'm fighting for down here in do Austin. You think, do you think that the legislation that's been crafted by Representative Chair Buckley now, this revised HB1, do you think that will, does that have enough in there for rural Republicans to go along with? So I have not fully digested all of uh, the new version of HB1. I had read all of the last version. I'm currently in the process of re reviewing this. As you know, it's an incredibly long bill. Um, if I had my way, it would be a simple bill. Let's debate all of these things on the merits. Uh, people, including myself, want to do the right thing for every great uh, teacher in the state of Texas. I want to increase teacher pay. I also want to empower parents uh, with education freedom. But this bill has a whole lot to it. It's a very complicated bill, so I'm working my way through it right now, um, and I'm happy to get back to you once I've done that. Republican State Representative Brian Harrison, thank you so much. As always, we appreciate it. Always good to talk to you, Jack.